Why four Formula One teams replace managers in less than 24 hours? 2022 is about to end and you think you're out of the woods yet? Wait till you get a load of this. Within less than 24 hours, four teams announced their personnel changes. Ferrari, Sauber, McLaren, and Williams. And one of them has not found their replacements. Let's find out which one it is. Ferrari. Time to look into the beginning of this shuffle of managers in the team boss transfer market. If such a kind of market is possible to exist, well, so be it. And what brought about these changes? The team that triggered the firing was Scuderia Ferrari. Ferrari is sacking Mattia Bonato, and with him out comes the managing director of Sauber Motorsports AG and team principal of Alfa Romero Racing, Frederick Vasseur. The prancing horse announced the sacking on 29th November 2022, which is quite hardly a week after the 2022 season finale in Abu Dhabi. And one of the names that quickly stood out from others is none other than Fred Vasseur, himself as a favorite to take up the sacked Mattia Bonato position. But Ferrari stipulated earlier that their recruitment process would not be finalized until the early phase of next year. Of course, now they backtracked on their statement by announcing their selected team principal, Fred Vasseur, before the Christmas. This is a shocker, as nobody knows what the series of decisions that led to this backtracking. It could be that they like to have their Christmas early, or initially, they wanted to scope out for other veteran F1 personnel. There have been talks of recruiting Ross Braun, Christian Horner, and Andreas Seidel, and even Jean Tote to replace Mattia Bonato. Vasseur may have been the key target in the minds of recruiters behind Ferrari F1 Formula Racing Division, or these same recruiters were reluctant to appoint him in the first place, hence the possible reason of, of scoping out. But whatever happened in the recruitment process done by Scuderia Ferrari, they were able to bring their act together once they fixated on Vasseur. Sauber Motorsports AG announced Vasseur's departure on the 13th December 2022, and he will leave the company in January. Subsequently, Ferrari confirmed that Fred Vasseur will be the successor of Mattia Bonato. For some reason, if you're still on the fence about whether this announcement is true or not, Vasseur himself arrived in Marinello for a suit fitting and a photo shoot, as he was vetted by senior management chairman of Ferrari, John Elkin, and Ferrari CEO, Benedetto Vigna. Vasseur has full support from the aforementioned executives and is way ahead of Benito. For Benito, he was just part of the package carried over over from the Sergio Marchionne and Luis C. Camilleri eras despite the fact that the actual appointment of Benito was made while Elkin was in a role. Well, as the saying goes, it's better late than never. If anything, this could inspire Vasseur to lead the team as he sees fit. And what's so special about this occasion is that he is the Ferrari's first outside hire since John Todd. This screams of Ferrari retiring its 15-year strategy of promoting from within the team. Perhaps this outside hire strategy could be the key to solving lingering problems that the team has been facing. The only question remaining for newly appointed Vasseur and his Ferrari team is how much is required to make an impact on the track in the coming year and whether there could be a protection if there is a short-term goals to fulfill. Sauber, Audi. Ferrari's new hiring strategy caused repercussion across the industry and caused Sauber to find their own CEO and team principal, as it was their man Ferrari had hired. But they were able to quickly get a man for the CEO position. His name is Andreas Seidel, who worked at McLaren for three years, but he'll not become team principal, and when he joins in January as CEO, one of the top priorities is to appoint a dedicated team boss. After the Vassior departure news, it was only a couple hours later they announced Seidel as successor, followed by Seidel's former employer McLaren announced his successor, Andrea Stella. We'll come back in a moment for Stella. As of right now, the focus is on Seidel. Joining as CEO of Sauber means like promotion for Seidel from working as team principal for McLaren, but looking at a short term here, it's a demotion for Seidel in competitive terms. Sauber Motorsports AG renamed its Formula One racing division as Alfa Romero and runs in a full sponsorship deal. It's also competitively backwards with less funding when compared to McLaren. But Seidel knew this all well with additional information that informed his decision to leave McLaren. And that information is that Sauber will get proper investment from Audi as the German automobile maker build its 
maiden F1 engine and buys into Sauber team ahead of 2026, for they are keen to enter into fray of Formula One racing. It's also possible for Audi to insert their people into the Alfa Romero racing division team. They stumbled upon Seidel when Ferrari was looking for its new team principal, with Seidel being one of the potential candidates. Seidel's very familiar with Volkswagen Group, where he had worked on the Porsche Layman's project and led his project to great success before joining McLaren. Interestingly enough, he was the experience of working with Sauber in F1, including when it was BMW Works team. In the end, Seidel is a good appointment for Sauber, and credit to Audi for having sensible long-term planning, as Seidel is one of the highly rated team principals in the F1 industry. McLaren McLaren included a huge loss as Seidel, who was part of the long-term plan to achieve the title and the main reason for making big decisions, got poached by Sauber, Audi, who now have a big game. Shortly after the joining the company, it was Seidel who swayed McLaren to greenlight the investment in the new wind tunnel and simulator. In fact, when Lando Norris had faith in the team, Seidel was the key element in his faith that led to him signing a very long contract. He established the structure and positive working culture that led to quick gains from the late 2010s, including a victory in 2021 that ended its losing streak. Unfortunately, existing problems were shown to the world when they produced a disappointing start in the 2022 season to the new technical regulations, but no one should point a finger at Seidel, as it's not his fault. Nevertheless, CEO Zach Brown is not changing its plotted course place during Seidel's timeline, so he promoted Andrea Stella, an experienced and successful engineer who worked with legends like Michael Schumacher, Kimi Raikkonen, and Fernando Alonso at Ferrari. Join McLaren in 2015 as executive director, racing alongside technical director James Key and production director Pierce Stein as part of the three-man leadership team. Stella has immense F1 knowledge and close familiarity with McLaren's F1 operations, but his responsibilities keep on incrementing over time, and because of this reason, McLaren doesn't like the idea of promoting from within as someone like Seidel. News broke out on 12 December 2022 that Williams CEO and team principal Joyce Capito and technical director Francis Xavier de Masson resigned from the company. Unlike Ferrari, Sauber or McLaren, all of whom have connected scheming plans to replace and hire personnel, departure at Williams has its own reasons. When Capito joined in February 2021 as CEO, it seemed as a key step in the long-term plan under Donaldson Capital. The result from the 2022 Constructors' Championship were abysmal, as they were placed in the bottom of the list with only eight points. Pretty sure it's a far cry from what they were hoping when they planned their long-term strategy. Rumors have been floating around that Donaldson is looking to sell the English automobile maker company, and after their departure, some raised their suggestions that their registration is due to the ownership wasn't inspired to invest any more money in the interim. Or the second scenario could be Donaldson felt both were incompetent leaders, hence pulled the plug. Which I can understand why, and it's quite evident in the results of 2022 Constructors Championship. As for the real truth behind all of the shenanigans, it's somewhere in the middle. Of course, without fail, the disclaimer about these rumors should be taken with a grain of salt. But what makes this a special case for Williams from other aforementioned cases is that this company still hasn't found any replacements for now empty positions, whereas other companies were able to get their coveted successors. Their departure proved there is going to be big changes of direction and exactly how significant changes would be? That answer lies on a supposed successor that would bring about the changes. It's expected from a successor to at least bring about core correction, if not complete change of direction. But after the whole debacle, they really need to bring their act together off the track as well as on the track. They better hope to find that perfect successor that will uplift them out of the dumpster situation. Nonetheless, it was interesting insight into companies poaching the COVID talent from one company to another. Hope you are all well informed. Enjoy the video and please write down your thoughts in the comment section.